The last video was about structure of a flower and sexual reproduction and angiosperms. If you haven't watched the video, the link is provided in the description. Make sure to watch the video. If you have watched it, you may have some questions about one of the concepts, double fertilization. The questions like why and how there are two male gametes when there is only one female gamete. The questions about egg cell and central cell. What is an egg cell and what is a central cell? Why the egg cell is haploid and the central cell is diploid? Do both of these belong to the same structure embryo sac? And how the embryo sac is formed? In this video, we shall try to answer some of these questions with the help of Science Made Easy. If you haven't subscribed to Science Made Easy, please subscribe and follow Science Made Easy for more such videos. This is part one of the video where we will be learning about development of male gametophyte. In the next video, we shall see the development of female gametophyte. What is a male gametophyte? A male gametophyte is a pollen grain in two or three celled condition. Pollen grains pass through three stages, single celled stage, two and three celled conditions. In single celled stage, the pollen grain is called as microspore and in two or three celled condition, it is called as male gametophyte. To begin with, let us see some of the structures of andrisium. As you know, group of stamens make andrisium. These stamens are also called as microsporophyll. Each stamen has anther and filament. Here, this is anther and this is filament. Each anther has two anther lobes. This is one anther lobe and this is the another anther lobe. These two anther lobes are connected by a tissue called as connector. Each anther lobe has two pollen sacs. These pollen sacs are also called as microsporangium. Pollen grains develop in these pollen sacs. This is the connector connecting the two anther lobes. This is one anther lobe and this is the another anther lobe. Each anther lobe has two pollen sacs. So, anther has four pollen sacs. Pollen grains are formed in microsporangium. For the formation of pollen grains, there must be microsporangium. How this microsporangium is formed? Its development takes place in anther. Anther has a mass of undifferentiated cells that are surrounded by epidermis and there are a rows of hypodermal cells which are also called as microsporangial initial or archesporium. Differentiation of these cells occur in each lobe and gives rise to the microsporangium. This is the archesporial cell which differentiates and gives rise to the microsporangium. The complete process of development of male gametophyte occurs in two stages, microsporogenesis and microgametogenesis. In microsporogenesis, microspores form in microsporangium and in microgametogenesis, the male gametophyte develops from microspores. The process in brief is, the archesporial cell differentiates to form microsporangium or pollen sacs from where the microspores arise and these microspores give rise to male gametophyte. These processes are explained detailedly in further video. Microsporogenesis. Formation of microspores in microsporangium is called as microsporogenesis. Let us see the differentiation of archesporial cell into microsporangium and development of microspores in microsporangium in detail. The archesporial cell, which is also called as microsporangial initial cell, undergoes periclinical divisions. The divisions that occur parallel to the tissue or organ surface are called as periclinical divisions. These divisions give rise to outer primary parietal cell and inner primary sporogenous cell. The outer primary parietal cell undergoes several divisions and gives rise to different wall layers. These wall layers are epidermis, endothelium, middle layer and tapetum. Epidermis is the outermost layer and tapetum is the innermost layer. The three outer wall layers, epidermis, endothelium and middle layer give protection to the pollen grain and helps in the essence of the anther for the release of pollen grains. The tapetum provides nourishment to the pollen grains. The cells of tapetum are multinucleated and have dense cytoplasm. This is the differentiated archesporial cell. These are the different wall layers, epidermis, endothelium, middle layers and tapetum. Inside of the tapetum you can see the sporogenous tissue. This sporogenous tissue gives rise to the pollen grains. Let us see how. The sporogenous cell undergoes several divisions and forms microspore mother cell. These microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis and gives the four microspores. These four microspores are haploid in nature and these are the pollen grains. If 
you see this image, this is the microspore mother cell which is formed from sporogenous cell. It undergoes meiosis, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 and gives rise to 4 microspores. These 4 microspores are the pollen grains in single cell stage. As I said earlier, a differentiated archosporial cell has different wall layers like epidermis, middle layers, etc. This is the sporogenous tissue which is present inside to the tapetum. The sporogenous tissue undergoes several divisions and differentiations to give microspore mother cell. The microspore mother cell forms the microspores through meiosis. The microspores are also called as pollen grains. The pollen grains develop in structures called as pollen sacs or microsporangium and this is the pollen sac. As I said the anther has four. This is the second one, this is third one and this is fourth pollen sac. Let us see some more details about pollen grains. The pollen grains are unicellular, uninucleate. It has two layered wall, exine and intine. The exine is the outer wall and the intine is the inner wall. The exine is made up of sporopollenin and there are some regions where sporopollenin is absent. These regions make the germ pores. If you see here, this is exine and this is the germ pore. Here the sporopollenin is absent and inside of exine is the, this is intine. Intine is pectocellulosic and the germ pores help during pollen germination and pollen tube formation. With the formation of microspores ends the microsporogenesis. Now male gametophyte develops from microspore which is called as microgametogenesis. The microspore or pollen grain is the first cell of male gametophyte. It has haploid nucleus and the pollen grain starts germinating while it is still in the pollen sac or microsporangium. It divides and transfers from single nucleate stage to the double nucleate stage and a cell wall establishes forming two unequal cells, the generative cell and the vegetative cell. The generative cell is lenticular or spindle shaped and it remains swimming in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell. Generative cell is comparatively smaller than vegetative cell. The vegetative cell is comparatively bigger than generative cell and it has food reserves. This is the image of vegetative cell and generative cell. Vegetative cell is bigger and generative cell is smaller and it is spindle shaped. 60% of the angiosperms shed their pollen grain in this two cell stage. Now the pollen grain is in two cell condition. After pollination, it passed to the three cell condition by the division of generative cell that gives rise to the two male gametes. Here note that the two male gametes arise from the division of generative cell and not from vegetative cell. If you see the image, this is the generative cell nucleus and this is the tube nucleus. The generative nucleus divides and gives rise to the two male gametes. After the pollen tube formation or pollen tube germination in stigma, the tube nucleus degenerate. Here is the answer to the first question, how and why there are two male gametes and the role of the two male gametes in double fertilization. I hope you may find the video useful. Thank you for watching the video and please keep supporting Science Made Easy.